Right, so it's research and development time here at the K-Murder Mansion. And uh, you guys have seen Big Geek quite a lot. This is Little Geek, I actually built this one first. And I've been trying to find a smaller solar charge controller that is also RF quiet to go in here because I want to start building and selling these as well um, along with Big Geek. Big Geek are already for sale. You can go to kmrd.square.site if you want to uh, take a look at the battery boxes. This is currently the solar charge controller that I have inside Little Geek. It's a five amp solar charge controller. It charges great. It's tiny. It's just a, a circuit board and it's fantastic. It's been in here for several years and I've never had a problem with it. Other than if I'm playing radio and using a solar panel at the same time with Little Geek, this basically ruins your day for radio because it puts out a lot of uh, RF uh, noise. So my friend Chuck over at KKUSY Ham Radio Adventures suggested this solar charge controller. This is from Bouge RV maybe. So I bought this on Amazon for, I think it was about $18. And he, he said he'd heard some good uh, reviews on it. So it, anyway, it's a, it's a 10 amp pulse width modulation solar charge controller for lithium iron phosphate. And it's actually says it's, it's pretty much for uh, any kind of chemistry here. I'll give you a close up here of this. And uh, it's basically supposed to do the thing. Unfortunately, it doesn't fit inside Little Geek. Because basically the way uh, Little Geek is, I basically plug that wire there and that wire there, close up shop, we're in business, right? Well, we can't really do that with this Bouge RV. So it's already out for a solar charge controller for Little Geek. Uh, maybe I can put it in Big Geek, but probably not. I have a 20 amp charge controller in here. so. Uh, we're kind of just seeing, is this a good charge controller? But also, here's a question for you. There's a 12 amp hour BioNO in here. Would you guys be interested in buying a battery box knowing that the charge controller is going to produce a lot of RFI, so you can't charge while you're playing radio? But other than that, so I use this primarily as like a backup power source. I use it to charge the batteries in my cameras and things when I'm out portable. Uh, I do play radio off it every now and again if I'm using like the 705 or something. Um, it's got four or three power pole outputs, one power pole in for solar. It's got USB charging, two USB-Cs and one USB 3.0 quick charge. Um, fused and everything, the, the meter's got a shunt on it so it charges your voltage, it tracks your current draw. Uh, your, your amp hours that you've used, all that stuff. You get all the information you'd ever possibly want to know out of your battery. But would you be interested knowing that it's going to keep the cost down and you'll be able to charge it. You just won't be able to charge it while you're playing radio. So uh, five amps, you can hook a whole, 100 watt solar panel up to this, no problem, and uh, charge your battery in two and a half hours maybe under, under really good sun. So. I want to hook this up. I'm going to I'm going to charge this battery and see what we can get as far as um, is it is it RF clean? Because if anything, we can get out of this video that we've got an RF clean, maybe uh, solar charge controller for like eighteen dollars. So that would be really cool in and of itself. So let's get to hooking this thing up and we'll run outside and plug it into a solar panel and get a radio on the air and see what happens. So I am just going to use some spare bits and bobs. This is an old power pole. These are fake power poles, so I don't really care about them. So I'm just going to cut these off. And let's see, 16 gauge is which one? So we put these guys, these are called ferrules. I use this iWIS ferrule crimper thing. I got this, this whole kit for like 25 bucks. It's, it's come uh, quite handy. I'll throw a link in the description if I remember. We just squeeze it. Done. Okay. All right, so you've got two inputs here. You've got where your solar panel goes and then where it connects to the battery, which is great. I don't care about a load. I take my load from the battery. You put the plus in the plus and the minus in the minus and wrench it down. Wiring a solar charge controller could not be any easier. And just like that, we're done. Now, I'm gonna connect the solar panel side and the battery side. And hey, look at that. It's on. 
So we got a little bit of setup here. So the battery comes as a gel cell, so we're just gonna long press this, change it to lithium, and it'll charge all of them. And then we'll go over to LFP for lithium iron phosphate. We should be able to long press this one to save it. There we are. And now here's our charging voltage. I wanna go up to 14.6. Long press it, and we should be good. So here's the menus. Looks like you got, here's your solar panel voltage. Error codes, if there are any, zero means nothing. This is the regular screen here, so you can see the battery's at 13.1 volts right now. There's which kind of battery you're on. Charging 12 volt, or you can go to 24 volts. 14.6 volts, and it has a temperature that does not appear to be accurate, because it's definitely not 82 degrees in my house right now. But who cares about that? So let's go outside and charge this up. This top left one is the solar in. I've got a 100 watt bioeno panel plugged in, so let's go ahead and plug it in. And there we are. So we're getting 3.4 amps of current in. So that's great. And we can also see on the charge controller here, we're getting, it's cycling, showing us what we're getting. So that's pretty cool. I like that. But what happens with RF? So the solar panel is not plugged in right now. This is just the noise that's common at my house. So let me plug in the charge controller now. All right, we're officially charging the battery. I'm not seeing anything here on the meter that looks out of the ordinary. So that's good. Just usual ham radio business, looks like. All right, let's try another band. Let's try 20 meters. That is my normal noise floor, I'll unplug it. So nothing changed, that's just how bad it is at my house. I'll go ahead and plug the solar charge controller back in. That might be some noise right there. Let's unplug this. Nope, so that's just regular noise. It's really noisy at my house. Okay. But that's what it would sound like. So now we're plugged back in. Let's go up to 10 meters for the sake of it. Not seeing any noise here on 10 meters, so is looking to be pretty good. Nothing here. I think this is some local noise. Let's unplug it. Still there, so it's not coming from the solar charge controller. And that's what 17 meters looks like regularly for me. That is not the charge controller. That is how it looks for me every day. But I'm not seeing any, I'm not seeing any nasty hash caused by a charge controller. So that looks pretty good to me. So there we have it. A good, cheap, I think I paid $18, $19 for this. RF Quiet solar charge controller that works with lithium iron phosphate batteries. Unfortunately, it's not gonna fit in Little Geek, so my search will continue. But no worries, because there's also Medium Geek. And that's exactly where this is gonna go. Guys, if you find this kind of content helpful, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. You can also follow me on Twitter at K8MRD, and we'll see you again on another episode of K8MRD Radio Stuff. 73, guys.